Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the beloved and tuneful operetta, Countess Maritza, starring Gordon MacRae and his guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Blanche Thebaum. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the leading mezzo-soprano of the Metropolitan Opera, lovely Blanche Thebaum, is the Countess Maritza, and I am Count DeCillo, and we shall be singing of the gypsy life. I ask you, Baron, what more could a man want in a morning like this, a spirited horse? <laughs> I must say, Count DeCillo, you're in rather high spirits for a man without a penny in his pocket. <laughs> Why not, Baron? I had a good time spending the money. Uh, one of the finest estates in Hungary squandered. And what do you have to show for it? <laughs> the memories of a very good time. You have a very carefree attitude toward life. Baron, that's my philosophy exactly. In the days gone by, like a slave was I, and a woman smiled, then was all worthwhile. Was a siren song I heard all day long at the call of them all. I would fall if two eyes of blue would my heart. Perhaps a day, goodbye, blonde, that I'd find a brunette. I would love in her smile and forget. Now I can look at the moon without my friend is he, his bright old face with good humor is beaming, he smiles on me, stars seem to sympathize, laugh while they're gleaming, cause I'm Now in the evening I sit very happy And all alone, not a care I own And if you ask me why I don't mind telling you Forever I had said to Countess Hilo, I don't trust you at all when it comes to women. I don't think I'll recommend you to the Countess Maritza after all. Oh, please, Baron. I need work. I have to support my sister, Lisa. Well, I know that Countess Maritza needs an overseer, but uh, your sister and Maritza are friends. What if Lisa finds out? Well, tell her that I'm carrying out a masquerade. Tell her that I'm secretly in love with Maritza. Uh, if Maritza finds out who you are, we'll both be in trouble. 
She thinks every impoverished nobleman who pays any attention to her is out to marry her for her money. Well, here are her gates. We turn in here. This gypsy wagon. Yes. They come every year at this time and camp on the estate. Ha-ha! Hold on, gypsies! A song! you, Countess Marita. <laughs> Countess Marita. Oh, Baron, forgive me. I was so happy to see the gypsies I didn't notice you or your friend. Countess, this is Bela Torak, who used to be overseer for Count Tassilo. I'm at your service, Countess Maritza. An overseer? But he looks I like... I can recommend both his diligence and his honesty. Bela Torak. You come, then, with high recommendations indeed from a gentleman I greatly respect. If you want the position, it is yours. Thank you, Countess Maritza. I, I do want it very much. Oh, who is that? Oh, it's you, Turek. Forgive me, Countess. I didn't realize anyone was in the garden. Well, I was sitting here listening to the gypsy fiddlers. Sometimes I wonder if there's gypsy blood in my veins. I have such a longing to follow them. Oh, there's gypsy blood in all of us, Countess. We all love the open road, the open sky, the road that curves ahead into adventure. Yes, and the wild, intoxicating music of Romany.
Have you ever been in love? No, Turek. Well, there's never been anyone in love with me. Oh, you were young and lovely. Hasn't any man ever told you that? Oh, yes. But those who have told me also knew that I had inherited a very large fortune. Well, if you go through life mistrusting everything and everyone, you'll never find happiness. This has developed into a rather personal discussion, hasn't it? It was the spell of the gypsy fiddles, Countess. I quite forgot for the moment that you are a Countess, and I am merely your overseer. Beg pardon, Countess Maritza, but the Countess Lisa has arrived. Lisa? I'll be right in, Charles. Yes, your ladyship. Torek, are you in the habit of referring to the sister of your former employer as Lisa? I apologize, Countess. It was a slip of the tongue. Kindly watch yourself in the future. You may go to your quarters. Greetings, gypsies. You seem unhappy, overseer. Come, forget your troubles. Come, join the gypsies around the gypsy fire. Yes, the fires of the carefree and the happy. Nobody here ever has to pretend. Oh, I wish I could spend the rest of my days with you. They used to call me Count, and I had friends galore. And pals to drink with me. And the sweethearts to adore But friends and sweethearts follow summer Flying like the swallow From the winter to the sunny shore If I could have my way With gypsies I would stray for friendships I'd not care, I'd wander free as air. I'd be a happy rover, I would roam the wide world over. To my gypsy comrades I would say. Yes, I do, Countess. But I'm intoxicated with gypsy music and gypsy dreams. And thoughts of you. Of me? Of you. Here by this gypsy fire, we are equals. Oh, really, Torek? And for these few moments, Countess, I can tell you that there is no girl your equal the entire length of the Romany Trail.
return for the second act of Countess Maritza in just a moment. You know, you probably live a long way from the factories that manufacture the things that make your home such a pleasant and comfortable place. That's why without the railroads, your home would be pretty empty. But the railroad's part in furnishing your home involves more than just seeing that everything you need and use gets to your hometown. Those things must arrive safely and in good condition. To begin with, goods must be packed properly and in the right kind of container. Every container must be tightly closed and marked correctly. Now, that part of the job is the responsibility of the shippers. Then, all containers must be carefully loaded and firmly braced in freight cars so they will not be damaged in movement. Finally, the railroads must see to it that the freight cars are carefully switched and smoothly handled all along the line that leads from factory to your hometown. And because the prevention of loss and damage depends on teamwork, the 25,000 members of the Shippers Advisory Boards and America's Railroads are once more joining together in the observance of April as Perfect Shipping Month. This countrywide observance of Perfect Shipping Month is just one of the ways in which shippers and railroads cooperate with each other in striving for safe and prompt handling, shipping, and delivery of America's freight. And today that job is more important than ever, not only in April, but also the year round, with every month a perfect shipping month. For as America's production lines and America's railroads step up their twin effort to meet the needs of national defense, at the same time that they keep our civilian economy rolling along, the nation can ill afford lost or damaged goods. That's why these days both railroad men and shippers are exerting extra care to see that America's productive output is fully protected from source to final destination. Now here is the second act of Countess Maritza, starring Gordon McRae and his guest Blanche Thebon. You sent for me, Countess Maritza. Uh, yes, Torek. I um, I I wanted to talk to you about your work. Has my work been unsatisfactory? No. As a matter of fact, your work has been most satisfactory. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to discharge you. Why? Well, please don't feel that it's because you're inefficient. It's because uh, I am inefficient. I just can't seem to think of you in the terms one should think about one's overseer. Why, Countess Maritza. I shall miss you very much. I refuse to go. You refuse? I love you. What? How can I leave? I love you, Maritza. Oh, Torek. Why is the world so changed today? Why does it seem joyous and gay? Skies never were quite so blue. Love seems to have charms so new. Love in my heart awakens as flowers bloom. Seems all divine 
Maritza. Maritza, my darling. Oh, Turek, my dearest. Oh, pardon me. Oh, it's Lisa. Come in. Oh, Tassilo, it's all right now, isn't it? She loves you, I'm sure of it. Lisa. Lisa? Tassilo? Then you must be Lisa's brother, Tassilo. Count Tassilo. Mm, it was most ingenious of you to come here and pose as an overseer. I was lonely and much too sentimental, and you played on it very cleverly. Maritza, listen to me. Oh, I congratulate you on your performance, Mr. Torek. I love you, Maritza. I know the exact state of your finances, Count Tassilo. Your coffers are as empty as the words you would like to use to convince me now. Maritza, I wouldn't dream of trying to convince you of anything. You almost loved me, and you hate me now. Well, I almost loved you, and I'm sorry for you now. You know how to dream, but you won't let your dreams come true, Maritza. Golden dreams that we knew Hearts were light, skies were blue Goodbye, Maritza. him, Lisa, when I thought he was to wreck the overseer. But when I found out who he was... Do you think he wants you for your money? There are a dozen women of fortune he could marry. He loves you, Maritza. He truly loves you. But if you let him go now, you'll never see him again. I know him well enough for that. Where is Tassilo? He's waiting for me at the gypsy camp. He doesn't know that I'm speaking to at you. At the gypsy camp? Oh, I'll go there at once. <laughs> Gypsies, loveless may she live alone, envying you, gypsies. Someday may she vainly sigh, and too late discover all her boasted wealth can't buy one true heart who love her. Not despise her. Leave her to her lonely fate. Play, gypsies, dance, gypsies, play. I 
I've made a terrible mistake. Oh, please forgive me. You don't think I'm a fortune hunter any longer? I love you. That's all I know about you. And that's all I want to know. I knew that when you walked out of the door. If you left me, I should be lonely all the rest of my life. Maritza, this is like a, a golden dream. Blanche Thebaum, our lovely Countess Maritza, will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, thanks to Lorene Tuttle, William Johnston, and our entire company. The Countess Maritza, with music by Emmerich Kalman and book by Harry B. Smith, was adapted for The Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Marvin? One of the most important factors responsible for saving the lives of our fighting men wounded in Korea is the availability of blood and blood plasma. American servicemen are recovering from their wounds at greater speed and in larger percentages than in World War II. Now, the reserve of plasma retained from World War II and built up in the years of peace is virtually exhausted. That's why a real emergency exists today and why all adults are urged to call their Red Cross chapter or local blood donor center and make an appointment as soon and as often as possible. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is Blanche Thebaum. Thank you, Gordon. It was a genuine thrill to join you on the show train. Well, any time you want to come back, you know you have carte blanche, Blanche. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Gordon, where are you traveling next week? Well, we're traveling into a wonderful world created by the one and only Jerome Kern. Hmm. We're all going to get smoke in our eyes, Blanche, for Roberta. And Nadine Carter is our guest star. Oh, sounds wonderful. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Blanche. You are wonderful. And come ride the show train with us again real soon. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week. And Roberta, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Countess Maritza was presented by arrangement with Century Library Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae will soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribe, there's more great music with the telephone hour next on NBC.